Chris Lee, motivational speaker, coach, best-selling author, and my BFF, right? Absolutely. <laughs> your BFF, your buddy, your support, your mentor. I'm proud of you. What can I say? My coach. Uh, we're here at the, together this weekend at the Red Rock Casino. That's right. Abundance uh, of Prosperity. That's it. Yeah. And uh, my coach again, you know, um, so I appreciate everything that you've done for me and all of us here in our group, you know, so man, thank you so much for making the time. For sure. Uh, anything for you and anything for your team. And I'm nothing but proud of everything that, that has happened through the process of transformation. Yeah, it's amazing. So Chris, you're from, you're from Puerto Rico? I was, I'm actually from New York. I was okay. born in New York. My parents are from New York. My mom is Russian background. My dad is English background. But I moved to Puerto Rico when I was a year and a half. Okay. And then being there, my dad took off and left us there. And so Puerto Rico basically adopted me and my family. And so I consider myself Puerto Rican through adoption. And I grew up in the culture and the language. And I'm from Puerto Rico. Wow. And you travel, you travel like, I mean... We're in the COVID era this, this last year, right? But you travel. I haven't stopped. Yeah, right. But you, you travel from, you, you stay in Puerto Rico and you just travel. No, I live in over. Miami Beach. Okay. So I, I grew up in Puerto Rico, went to college in Boston, and then moved around and then settled in Miami Beach, which I love living in Miami. I love being on the beach. I love being in that tropical. I have a bit of Latin America plus U.S. plus Miami's super open. Right, open right now. Yeah, it's, it's, we're open. We never close, really. Yeah. Um, and I just love that that passion, that Latin passion, that tropical experience being there. And uh, I've chosen to stay in Miami, but I basically the truth is I live on an airplane because I do seminars all over the world, uh -huh. and so I'm based out of out of Miami and uh, travel everywhere. Yeah, I love Miami. And so, like, how did, how did this journey for you begin? Uh, you've shared, in, you know, in the, in the workshops that you do, you mm -hmm. share your story and helps, you know, helps everybody connect with you. And could, do you mind sharing? Sure, sharing of that? course. No, I'm, I'm an open, like I told you before, I'm an open book. Um, I started uh, the journey when I was going through college. I was my first year. I was studying communication psychology. And I had a friend who went through, the pro through a process similar to the one that you've been through, a transformational process. And uh, she insisted for a long time, like a year and a half, I was very resistant because, you know, didn't know much about emotional intelligence back then mm. or the law of attraction or mindfulness. Mm. Those were words that just weren't part of the popular culture. Now it's a buzzword. Everyone knows about it. And uh, finally, I decided to participate and it was the most important decision I ever made in my life. It completely altered my way of viewing the world. I never How imagined. old were you, were you at the time? I was 21. And uh, that's when I thought, I realized that my past doesn't need to define me. My circumstances don't need to control me. Mm. And most importantly, my emotions don't need to call the shots in my life. And those three things were things that ruled my life and rule most of our lives. Most of us are circumstance driven. We are defined by our past and our emotions call the shots. And so it was so liberating to realize that I could live my life based on a vision based on a commitment, based on discipline to those things, and then let the, the, let the feelings come along for the ride. And learning how to tame my dragon, you know, tame that mm. alien, that, you know, terrorist that lives inside of me that says that life sucks and everyone sucks and, you know, just didn't trust and didn't believe in himself. And so this process really supported me with that. That's amazing. Um, you know, like you talk, you talk about those things and I just feel like, like my, my own limiting beliefs, right? Like, you know, when I went through the, the breakthrough training with you and, uh, you know, I had, you know, I spent my whole life, right, putting up walls, not showing any weakness, you know, so to kind of break those walls is really, really powerful, powerful for me. And, uh, you know, in those things blindsides you, right, when you least, when you, you don't see it coming, right? Well, you also were able to see your triggers. And so I was able to be a trigger for you. Right. I told you, go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> go fuck yourself. And I, and, and I, I care enough about you to, to be that for you. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, of course, did not take it personal. But when you get triggered, you give your power away. Mm -hmm. And so through the triggers of the process itself, you're able to see, oh, my God, this is this is me in my life. This is what I do with my children, it's what I do with my wife, it's what I do at work. And so learning that vulnerability doesn't mean weakness. Mm -hmm. Vulnerability just means 
openness and humility and through vulnerability, you actually have infinite strength. Walls give you limited strength. Mm -hmm. And so the man I see today, the open heart, the humble, the caring, the committed man is unstoppable Yeah, through that. I always felt like, you know, you know, I've done a lot of work. I've done a lot of, you know, a lot of workshops, a lot of like educational things. Um, but uh, like the, 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 the um, choice, you know, choice is different, you know, because you're actually doing the drills you're actually going, you're doing like physical things, you know, you're not like just reading a book. and No, it's going. experiential. You go through a mm -hmm. series of different exercises and dynamics that it's not no longer textbook. It's more experience, it's life, it's challenges, it's games. You play games, you do one-on-one -on -one stuff. And so you're thrown into situations that get you out of your comfort zone. Sitting and reading a book and taking notes, we're, we know how to do that. We've been doing that our whole lives. So you could go to 100 workshops, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and not have a transformation, which is why people from all workshops that you can imagine from all walks of life come to Choice Center and go, oh my God, I had no idea what was available through this kind of education because it's, it's experiential. And experiential means you get put in situations that feel real. They're not. They're set up for you to learn something. And then through that process, you're able to identify, break through, and make new choices. Mm. Most of those, most of the times, like those things are built like when we're kids, right? When we're, we're children. Yeah, because well, when children come into the world, they come in free. And you think about it, if you've got little, you know, little children, you know that they're free. They don't want to miss out on anything. They don't want to go to sleep. They wake up and they are excited. That you know, kids are free. They also speak the truth. When they're pissed, you know it. When they're hungry, you know it. When they're sad, you know it. When they're happy, the world knows it. As we get older, we become more rigid and we become more closed down and we withhold our feelings, we stuff our emotions, and we start believing other people's limiting beliefs about what it is to be a man, what it is to be powerful, what it is to be a woman, what it is to be successful. And so we start buying into other people's belief systems and little by little we start shutting down. And what we don't realize is we're shutting down the most beautiful part of us, which is our essence, which is our heart, our vulnerability. Mm. And the world right now is going through a moment that the world needs healing. And it starts with each, each of us. The world we live in is the outcome of people's walls. If you, if you put seven billion people with walls and barriers and rackets, all together, that creates war, it creates separation, it creates isolation, it creates massive corruption, it creates a lack of leadership. I mean, look what we're having going on. This is not about one party or the other. It's all across the board. Mm -hmm. It's the environment, it's education, it's politics, it's all of it. And so when we take responsibility, which is what you did, sir, you decided to take Thank responsibility. You. You. Yeah, you did. You took responsibility for what it is that you were creating and for your own triggers, and you did all the work. You know, I'm, I cannot be prouder of you because you could, it could have gone one or two ways. You could have gone, well, screw this, I'm out of here, or, hey, wait a minute, this is not about this guy or the situation, this is about my life, let me look at it, and you started connecting the dots, and so that's what, that's what this is about. You know, because they say once you're an adult, it's, you know, it's hard to reprogram yourself. That's not true. You're not too old, you know, it's like, I'm too old, I can't teach an old dog new tricks. Right. <laughs> not true, it's never too late to reinvent yourself, never too late to start over again. When you think about all these people that are in their 40s or 50s or 60s or 70s, even their 80s, 80s yeah. their 80s, Paul, creating my, my class, mm -hmm. I'm sure you see it, create new lifestyles, new habits, new abilities, new talents. I think that the only thing that could stop us in life is us. And when we get out of our own way, watch out world. We can create anything. And I'm an example of that. I, I grew up thinking I was worth nothing. I grew up feeling that I couldn't do anything. I grew up feeling that I wasn't enough, that I wasn't smart enough. You know, I was told in school to keep my mouth shut because if I ever opened my mouth, I'd get in trouble or I'd say something stupid. So I grew up thinking that I was stupid and I was, I was trouble until I realized that that's not true. I was able to shift those beliefs. What prevents people from coming to, to these, these courses, these life-changing, these life-improving courses? Well, not just courses, but from transforming their lives, mm -hmm. right? Because really, what the, what's the course? The course is an opportunity to transform your life. I don't need it. 
That's called ego. Mm. So what, what prevents us from change and transformation is ego. And ego wants to be right. Ego wants to look good. Ego wants to stay in control. And ego wants to avoid domination. And so I build my life to the point where I'm right. And anyone who contradicts what I'm saying, I either challenge or get rid of. I want to be in control. So that only guarantees that I'm going to keep creating what I've always created because you could only control what you know. And so everything unknown is uncontrollable. I want to look good. So I don't want to make a mistake. And so the need to be in control and to look good stops us from taking on these courses, taking on transformation. And so if, it, if I were to give it a word, it's fear. Mm. Fear of whatever it is that I'm making up about this. Mm. You know, for the, the, you know, the leadership, for me, um, it's bringing out the best in me. Like it's, uh, it's, uh, and I, you know, I tell the guys that I've got, that, are, that I've enrolled, you know, to, uh, you know, that's where the real work begins, you know, you're built, you're creating those habits, right? And it's you're the changing practice, yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's where it happens. It's where you live it. It's where you practice it. Because look, anyone, anyone can do something for an hour, for two hours, make a shift, make a change, but mm. to have it be permanent, you know, this more than I do, you're in that kind of world. It takes 60 to 90 days of practice, 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 practice to shift a habit. So leadership, which is where you are right now, is in the practice ground. It's where you conquer those fears and mostly conquer the habits. And you shift habits, create new habits. And also the support. I just love the whole support aspect from the top down. You know, you've got the owner of the company supporting you. You've got the trainer supporting you. You've got your team supporting you. It's really unbelievable how much time and effort is put into each person, right? Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, jiu-jitsu, and I, I know, like, that's how it works, right? That's how big things happen. That's how big changes happen is through that teamwork, through the connections with others. Yeah. And you know what? There's nothing more, I, I tell you, as, as a trainer and a coach and a mentor, there's nothing that fulfills me more than to know that my legacy gets passed on. Because at the end of the day, it's not about me, it's about the impact I make. And if I'm on a mission to make a difference for you, it's because I know you're gonna pick, impact millions. And your difference goes on and we continue that, it's all energy, right? And so mm -hmm. we pay that forward. And those people that are listening to this right now, you could think about, you know, what is it that you want to transform in your life? What are the things that you have given up on? What are the things that you have thought were impossible? And imagine a life where the impossible becomes possible. Because that's what this is about. And right. that's, that's what we do. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's made me, it's high performance training, right? High it's performance high performance. Training. And the other thing is people who think they don't need it, then basically you're not in the leadership category that you need to be in because a true leader continuously, and I can tell you I've been doing this for 33 years. 33 years. I am still learning, I'm still growing, I'm still participating in these trainings, I'm still a student, I'm still looking at what's my next breakthrough. I'm in a learning mode for the rest of my life. The minute I stop learning, I stop living. So if you stop learning in your life, you stop living. That's awesome. But this weekend we're together. We're doing your 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 coaching me on abundance and prosperity. Yes, this is the abundance prosperity workshop. We're focusing on the mindset of an abundant being versus the mindset of scarcity, mm. a scarce person who lives in scarcity. And so the mindset of abundance is a mindset of gratitude. Most of us just focus on what we don't have, what we're not, and we don't realize how blessed we are. We're all billionaires. We just don't know it because we're so filled with blessings that are priceless, and that's what we're looking at today. And that's the, the process of abundance and prosperity, which is tackling 16 principles of, of abundance and prosperity, furthering educating ourselves. And the whole, I think the whole umbrella of all this is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is our ability to manage change, manage curveballs, manage pandemics, manage a breakdown, how to turn breakdowns into breakthroughs, changes into opportunities, a setback into a comeback. Setback into a comeback. Nice. So uh, you've been coaching for 33 years. What is, uh, what are some of your, you can say just one, you know, but what are you, what's, a, what's a favorite moment uh, that you have of coaching for 33 years? There's so many moments. 
but I could tell you that I was in Russia and I was coaching a group that uh, there was a specific person in that group, a woman who walked into, into the training, to the breakthrough training with a stoic face. And it turns out that her entire family got wiped out by the regime hmm. at the time. And this was many years ago. And she basically died. And to see her Saturday night at Breakthrough crying and smiling, filled with joy, it was like a transformation of the entire group. It was just incredible. That was like the most beautiful moment that she got her joy back. Like she had a lot of reasons not to be happy. She had a lot of reasons to be a victim. But at the end of the day, she got her joy back. She got her power back. And she got her power back from the people who took her to her family. And that was one of the key moments that I thought, oh my God, that's incredible. Another key moment was when I had a woman who was 99 years old. 99 years Doña old. Doña Elsa in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And in the training, she sat in the front row every single day with a big smile. And I said, Doña Elsa, why are you smiling all the time? And she looked at me and she goes, because I'm alive. <laughs> Most everyone I know that's my age or my peers are dead. And so I smile because I'm alive. And then she says something to the whole group that I'll never forget. She goes, you young people. She was looking at a lady that was 85 because next to her, she's a young woman. Right. <laughs> she goes, you young people live life like you have forever. I live life like all I have is today because I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow. Make every moment count. And hearing it from a 99-year-old lady was very powerful. She literally lives like she's not going to wake up the next day. But... While she's been living, people left and right are dying of all ages. So age does not guarantee you're going to be around. So the key, make every moment count. So that's another Give, key moment. Make every day count. Well, thank you so much for everything. <laughs> My BFF forever, yes. right? <laughs> you know that. You know that. I mean that. Yeah, I, I do. I do. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> and I look forward to uh, talking to you some more. Sure. It's, it's sometime well, in LA in the studio. Whatever you want. Listen, anything that you need, I'm a, a 100% in service to you and your, and your following and the people that, that respect you and to bring these tools. And that's what we're here for. We're here to serve and make a difference. That's it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.